Welcome to my three-part series on making a 3D low-poly paper craft from a PDF using a Cricut Maker. This video shows how to make a low-poly 3D paper craft like this dolphin design from a PDF of all its pieces with edge numbers to glue together using an electronic cutting machine like the Cricut Maker instead of doing it all by hand and then assembling your own version. Today we'll look at making a 3D low poly paper craft from a PDF using a Cricut Maker. This is part one of three, converting a PDF to SVG. Okay, let's handle a few disclaimers first. These videos are long. Please check the description for time markers to forward to sections that most appeal to you. This shows how I do it. It may not be the best, the fastest, or the easiest way, but it works for me. This is not necessarily a tutorial, but the steps are detailed enough that you should be able to do them. In part one, I cover importing a PDF to Inkscape, manipulating elements so that Cricut will understand it, and then saving as an SVG. In part two, we go over uploading to Design Space and adding it to a new project, tweaking for different tools such as the pen and scoring, and then scoring, drawing, and cutting on the machine, in my case a Cricut Maker. Part three, shows assembling the pieces at a sped up rate. All right, this is a file that I bought from Epigami and it's a mom and baby dolphin. It came in as a zip file, so I will unzip it. I'll just unzip it to the folder I'm in, which I have called Inkscape Demo. Right, and we'll see the files. So this particular one has come in with a PDF that's the baby white part, the baby blue part, the eyes, a set of instructions, the mom dolphin white part, and the mom dolphin blue part. This is obviously not typically how they come in, but I'll show you how I do it if these are doable as the PDFs that I like. So I'll go to In Inkscape. I will be in a new document. I'll do File Import. I will go to that folder. And I'll click on, let's say, the Mom Dolphin, the white part. Now, in all likelihood, it's going to be several pages. So this will show here to select the page. This is there's three pages. If I wanted page one, it would be this one. Page two would be that. Page three would be that. And yes, I do them separately. So I'll bring in page one first. All right, and what I do is I go to the layers group and I call this layer, I rename it to be PDF. Then I will add a layer I'm going to call page one. And I have that match whatever the page was in the PDF. So if it's page seven, I'll name this layer page seven so I know what page I'm on. I'll go back to this layer where the PDF is and I'll position it at X of zero and Y of zero. So I always know where it is interesting that it's not quite, I'll zoom in, aligned, so it looks like the original designer had it on a different size paper than my default. But for our purposes, that shouldn't be a problem. So now I have to decide a couple of things. If I want to pretty much keep this the same size, I know each page will fit certainly on the 12 by 12 sheet of paper in my maker and 
possibly on an eight and a half by 11 sheet. So if I don't want to make it smaller, smaller would be okay, but larger, it would be trickier. So um, I can combine all of the numbers as one object basically and keep these all together. That won't allow me to reposition this piece, this piece when I get into Cricut, but it is easier. So I'll show you that way first. But what I try to do here in the PDF is I try to, I want to click on a number. But right now, of course, the whole thing is going to be grouped. So I will ungroup it. And I see down here 343 objects. So if I click out of there, these should be separate objects now. If I click on one of the text numbers, I should be able to go up to Edit, Select Same, and go down to Object Type. And with any luck, it will find all of the numbers in the document. Now, it did not. So this PDF is not behaving as nicely as other ones have. So then I try the bigger number. So we'll try that and select Same object type. Hopefully it'll select all the numbers which it didn't. So I'm going to change my strategy now and this just differs from PDF to PDF. So what I'll do here is uh, I will select, I'm going to keep the pieces separate now so that I can group them how I want in design space but that's going to require a little bit more work. So I will select each of the numbers by clicking, holding down the shift key, I'm on a Windows machine, until they're all selected and like for this piece. So with any luck, all of these should be selected. Now notice over here, if you can see in the recording, when I thought I clicked on 26, it put this bounding box, which shows I really missed 26 and I got this line. So I want to unclick that. Well, I didn't, I got something else. So I'll try to, I don't know what this one is but I think I unclicked it. So you basically want to leave it to the point where you can see little bounding boxes around each of the numbers that you clicked. And then you can let go of the shift key. And what I do is I do, I use shortcut keys for this, but I'll use the menus for you to see. So I do edit, cut. And that way I can see if I got them all. And I'll show you in a minute what happens if I didn't get them all. And then I go over to page one and I use shortcut keys for this so it's faster, but I'll show you. I do edit and I do paste in place. So what that has done is put them on page one. But while they're still all selected, I go up to path, object to path, because design space won't import text. And then I also combine them. I do path combine. And that makes them all one piece, if you will, together which means in Design Space, when I change it to the Pen tool, I only have to click on it once instead of each individual little number. So if I want to make sure I got them, I can turn off the visibility of page one, and they're not on the PDF anymore. So I'll do that now for page, for this piece 16. So I'll click on these numbers. And I'll miss this middle one just for illustration purposes so you can see what happens the way I do it. And there are many ways to do this. This seems to work for me. So what I'll do now is I will do cut. And I notice I got all of the little numbers, but I missed this one. So what I like to do is paste in place right back. Usually it shows them to me there. As long as they're still selected, hold down the shift and pick the ones I missed. And now edit cut and go to the page and edit paste in place. Again, while they're all still selected, be sure to go to path, object to path and path combine. And that puts them all together. So I will turn off page one just to see if we got them all from the PDF, and we did. So now what I want to do, and I'll leave them off for a minute, 
is I want to select all of the dotted lines. And it looks like these are all the same. Let's zoom in a little bit. Okay, they're not exactly. This PDF is harder to tell. I like the ones where valley folds are dashed lines and mountain folds are dashed dots. It looks like this one has dashes for something and dots for something else. So at this point, I'm going to assume, going to back out, I should read the directions and see which is which. So I will file save. You want to save often. And I will name this. I'm going to name it low poly dolphin mom. Of course, name it something meaningful to you. And I will be right back. All right, I looked at the PDF instructions and it said that these dashed lines are valley folds and the small dotted line is a mountain fold. So what I've decided works best for me, since there are typically more valley folds, I use the scoring tool on my Cricut Maker for that. And for the mountain folds, since there are fewer, I use actually dashed lines that will cut. It'll be like a perforation to fold. So when I'm assembling them, I know which way to fold without having to look at any diagrams and have any printed sort of lines. So I will zoom out a little bit here. And what I want to do, since I am keeping the pieces separate right now, I did the numbers for one and combined them and the numbers for this piece, I'll call it number two for right now, I kept them separately. I'm going to do the lines for each one separately too. So I'll start with this one and I'll choose only this type. And I'll hold down the shift key and try to select all of these dashed lines in this piece. I'll do a similar thing that I did before. I will edit cut so I can see if there, I got them all. I'll turn back on visibility of page one. I'll go to it and I'll do edit paste in place. And while they're all selected, I want a score line for these in my Cricut Maker. So what I will do is I will go to the fill and stroke menu. I will go to stroke style and where they're all selected, it won't let me change the stroke. So I go up to path combine and then change the stroke to a solid line. And I'll show you later when we import it into Design Space then what we do with that. So that piece is done for that type of line and there were no mountain folds. So we'll repeat that for this. Since these lines are hard to distinguish, I'll have to zoom in. Usually I don't have to zoom in as much. That looks like a valley fold, so I'll grab it. That does not. That does not. This one does. And that does not. So now I will back out a little bit. I will cut. See if I got them. I did. I'll go over to page one. I'll do edit, paste, and place. Path, combine change it to a single line stroke. And every now and then I just turn off the visibility of that layer to see how I'm doing. So, um, in fact, I'll leave it off for right now. Now we just have the mountain folds on this piece. So I will take that line and I will take this line and this line same process. I'll cut it. I'll enable visibility of page one. I'll go click it to make it the usable layer. I will do edit paste in place. And as long as they're all still selected, we're going to do a little different this time. We're going to path combine like we did before, but now we're going to change it to a dash pattern. And I have found that these three dashes seem to work best for me. 
So I'll choose those three, but then I also go up to Extensions, Modify Path, Convert to Dashes, because that actually makes it work in Cricut. So I get this message that it's converting to dashes, only takes a couple of seconds. And I always usually save right after that, just to make sure. I save several times during it all, just to make sure it works. So now if I disable the visibility of page one, I should be able to see everything gone but the outline. So now we need to work on those. So I usually try clicking on these and see if I can get the whole piece as one, which almost never happens. So I could go around and hold the shift key and select each segment. Or if they're spaced far enough apart, I can do a, sometimes a box select and grab all the pieces. You just want to make sure when you do that that you don't get an errant piece of something else. So what I'll do with this while I'm still on this PDF layer is I will do path combine. And I'm going to go down here. So this was the dolphin white part. So we'll make, we'll pick a, I'll pick a sort of a lighter yellow just so I know I'm doing something. And then I know in design space it, it means white. Um, and so I will go down here to the paint bucket fill and I will fill that. And if I was successful in getting the outline and that, I will get this. Now I don't really want this stroke and this inside. So what is highlighted right now is just the fill. So I will go up to edit and cut it. Keep my visit, uh, turn on the visibility of page one. I'll go to page one and I will edit, paste in place and move to, with this to the bottom. It's like a range, go to the bottom. And that's how I want it to look. Although it is kind of interesting that there's a dashed line around it. That's not ever happened to me before on a PDF, so... Hmm. Maybe I need to go over here to where it says dashes and change it to solid. I'll do that. I haven't encountered that before, uh, so we'll see. And I'll go up and I'll file save. And then I'll go back, I'll disable the view of this just to help me see better. And I'll go ahead and click this now and delete it so I know I've taken care of it. And so the grouping will be easier. So then I'll back out a little bit so I can see all of this. I don't want this watermark, so I'm going to delete it. I just want this piece. So what I'm going to do is do a multiple box select. I mean, just a box. Oh, I grabbed something that I didn't want. Just want to do a select box around this, path combine, fill it, go to the select tool, it's selected, cut it, go up to page one, paste in place, move back a layer or to, the, to the back, and Save my file. Going to zoom in and see if this looks like it has a dashed line. And see, that outside doesn't. So I, I think Inkscape maybe kept the last thing that it had done. I'm kind of just learning Inkscape, so I'm not entirely sure. So I will back out and see. And I'm doing this with the plus and minus key on my numeric keypad. I can turn off page one. We don't need this anymore. We don't really need anything on this PDF layer, so I could, so what I will do is back out to make sure I get everything. Select everything, see there's some errant pieces in there. I'm going to delete everything so that I'm ready for the next page. I'm going to lock page one and save my file. And then I repeat this for each page in the PDF. So this is for page two. I will go to import, go to the same PDF. This was the mom and dolphin white part. It will take me to a page. We've already done page one, so this will now be page two. 
I leave all of these settings at the default. I'll click OK. I'm bringing it into the PDF layer. Position it at X of 0 and Y of 0. Boy, and it is really odd on this one. It's got its watermark that is messing things up. So I'm going to change this up. And every PDF is different, so just beware of that. Um, for right now, it doesn't really matter where it is, but I want the bulk of the pieces to be around my page here, sort of just for ease and working with this. So what I'm going to do over here now is I'm going to add a layer, and I'm going to call it page two. I'm going to keep these separate. All right, so page two, we'll zoom in a little bit to see what's going on. Actually, I'm going to back up. I'm sorry. I'm going to back up. We're going to ungroup all of this. So we're going to have to eventually anyway. I'm going to grab this watermark and get rid of it. I'm going to grab this bottom text and get rid of it. I'm going to group all the rest of this stuff just for kicks for right now. And I'm going to put it at zero. Zero. Now I'm going to zoom in and do my work. So there's two pieces here on this page. I will click on it, ungroup. So yes, I didn't have to do all that and reposition it. Going to grab the numbers. I must have missed that one by holding down the shift key, watching for the little box around it to make sure you actually got the number. I'm going to back out a little bit so that when I do my edit cut. Make sure I got everything. Go to page two, edit, paste in place. Path, object to path, remember to combine them. Change them to a path and combine them. Make it much easier in design space. And now we'll zoom back in and grab these lines and see what we have. These look like most of them are going to be valley fold. Sometimes in PDFs, although it again depends from PDF to PDF, you can select the type of line you're looking for and go up to edit, select same, the same stroke style. And it may find them all. It looks like it did, but it also looks like it found some stuff over here that I don't know what it's looking for. So I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to select them individually and have more control over that. This is time consuming. No one said this is a simple way, but it saves from hand cutting and hand scoring. And once it's in Cricut, you can change dimensions more easily than just printing out on paper. So I'm getting all of these. I think that's it. I think there's only one, two mountain holes. So I will edit cut. If I got them all, I did. Go to page two, edit, paste in place, path, combine, go change to solid line. Now we will go back. Sometimes it helps to turn off the visibility of that page so you can see what you're doing. I'll grab these two mountain folds. All there is, cut, turn back on page visibility, edit, paste in place, path, combine, change this to the dash pattern. I like the three dashes there. Remember, then you have to go to extensions, modify path, convert to dashes. And now's a good time. Save the file. 
And now we'll go over to this one. I don't always do the outlines. I do it in different orders. Sometimes I do an entire piece first. Um, sometimes I just do what, I don't know, what I feel like doing. So this one, I'm going to do the numbers on this piece. I mean, these are pretty big pieces and pretty simple. So I'll grab those, and cut, make sure I got them all. Go to page two, paste in place. Path, object to path, path combined, take a pair of those. I'll grab the valley fold lines. We'll cut. Make sure I got them all. I did. Go to page two, edit, paste in place. Path combined. Change to the solid line. Now, remind myself where I am. I already did all of the folds on that piece, but on this one we have one mountain fold. So I'll grab it, I'll cut, I'll paste up in place. I will, I don't have to combine it, it's already just one path, I'll change it. Oh, I guess I do. Path, I will combine it. Now I will pick the three dash pattern. Now I will do extensions, modify path, convert to dashes. And I will save. I'll turn off visibility, I'll back out, and all I have are these pieces left. So now I want to grab them. It would be easier to draw a bounding box around this one first rather than I think this one. So I'll try that. And make sure I didn't get any pieces there. I will do path combine. I'll fill it. Go to the select tool. It does look like it has the dash pattern stroke. I'll we'll go ahead and change that, I guess, to a solid line. I really generally only want the inside. Select, I'll cut. I will go to page two. I will edit, paste in place, and move to the bottom. Go back to the PDF, turn off the visibility of page two. I can get rid of this guy. And this PDF seems to have stuff that's hanging around, but we don't know what it is. So I have not encountered that before, but I'll just delete some of that. But that also means when I'm drawing the bounding box around this, I might be getting some stuff that I don't know what I'm getting. So I'll combine. Fill it. I will select, cut, turn on visibility of page two, go to it, paste in place, move to back. Turn off the PDF to see how we're doing. Look how page two looks. Looks good. I'll turn off the visibility of that for a minute and we'll go to the PDF, turn it on. I'm going to back out a little bit and select everything and get rid of it. I could also just delete this layer before I reuse it, but that's fine. So something I forgot to show, and sometimes I do it at the end, sometimes I do it as I finish each page. Let's go back to page one. I'll lock page two right now, even though I'm going to come back to it. Again. Go back to page one, show it, unlock it. We want to group each piece so it's easier to work with in design space. So draw a bounding box around one. And since these numbers over here are grouped, 
drawing the bounding box should grab any of those or the lines because unlike in design space in Inkscape you have to completely surround an object to click it not just touch part of it so this looks good and typically you can notice down here there will be four objects if there was an outline a mountain fold and a valley fold and numbers in this piece there wasn't. There will only be three objects if there was just numbers, outline, and valley fold. So that's a, just a double check to see that that looks good. So we're just going to group these. And then this piece should have four objects, which it does, because we know it's got numbers, valley fold, mountain folds, and the outline. So we will group it. All right, and then I'll lock it again and hide it. And then go to page two, unlock it, unhide it, and do the same thing. We'll group these. There's four of them, good, object group. And then we'll grab these. And there's four objects, so that's good. Okay, and then I will turn that off and lock it. I'll go ahead and do the third one, but I won't record it because it'll be the same series. Okay, I'm back. I've pretty much finished up page three, but I haven't grouped these yet because I noticed something when I was grouping this 23 piece, and so I changed it for this, but I'll explain. But one thing I wanted to mention before the multiple selecting of the bounding boxes when you might be selecting objects you're not aware of. I always like to go to the PDF layer, because I'm done with it now, there were only three pages in this PDF, and click on the PDF layer and delete it, because we just don't want that getting in our way now. So uh, I need to group these, I need to unlock this page, and I'm going to zoom in a little. And notice the outline of this one is different from the outline of that. That's because on this one, when I realized what was happening. I made it have no stroke, just a fill. And I think that's what I wanted, Cricut, because I believe when I did a test and I had both, it tried to do a double cut. And I'm sure there's a way around it. Like I said, I'm just kind of new at Inkscape and I found what works for me. Um, certainly open to comments, but what I'm going to do here is, and the reason I, the way I noticed it is I went to group this. And I drew my selection box around it. And you know, I said before, we're expecting four objects down here, or three. We want, there's going to be one for the numbers, one for the score lines that are valley folds, one for the score lines that are dash, cut lines, and one for the outline. So if, and if there are no mountain folds, then there'll only be three. But there shouldn't be five, like this says. So I was wondering what was going on. So what I did to find out it wasn't obvious, now it is but I just clicked on something and I used the arrow down key on my keyboard just to move it down five arrows, one, two, three, four, five. So I could see what it was moving. And that's when I realized, oh, it's the stroke is separate from the outline. I mean, the stroke is separate from the fill, of course, and I really don't want the stroke. So I'm just going to delete that. Now, when I, use the selection box. I should have four objects, which I do, so I can go up and group them. And I believe this one was already grouped, a group of four objects. So now that I've noticed that, I probably have to go back and do that for the other pages. So I will lock this page, turn off the view for a minute, and I'll go and start with page one. I'll unlock it, I'll look at the view. I had already grouped this, Interesting that it's only three objects, though. I'm going to ungroup it and just see why that is. So if I just grab what I think is the outline and move it down five arrows, two, three, four, five, it is, in fact, what I think I want, which is the color with a, an outline. So I'll move it back up five, one, two, three, four, five. I really don't need it to have a stroke, so I'll just go ahead to stroke paint and give it no stroke. And I think that's the safer way. It looks a little weirder, but I think it's the safer way. So now I will, I may have to do a test again. So now I'll group those. 
And I'll do the thing with, same thing with this one. I'll just go in, ungroup, grab that, I'll just move it one, two, three, four, five, make sure that's what I'm working with, one, two, three, four, five, and I won't give it a stroke. And then I will just group those back. And it's still four objects, so that's good. So I will lock that and go do page two. Same thing. Stroke. I misclicked, sorry. Okay. Now, I'm done with all the pages. I'll back out a little bit. If we turn on the visibility of all of them, you see they're all over each other. So, since the pieces are numbered, I don't really care what position they're in. So what I like to do is unlock the layers, grab the pieces, and drag them outside the page box. And I don't really want them to snap together, so I'll just turn off snapping. And I just position them in a way that sort of makes sense. I mean, it varies from design, design, how they're going to look. And in design space, I may want to rearrange them anyway. So that's fine. It doesn't have to be on the bounding page. What I found is I can't figure out how to make the size that's in Inkscape match what's in design space anyway. So I will save the file like this. And I will group these, and I will pay attention to, I'll change the sizing to inches, and I'll pay attention, in fact, I'll write this down. There's many other ways to do it, of course, but I'll write down the width is 13.964 inches, and the height is 14.912. I will want to reproduce that exactly in design space because I'm going to have other pages from other PDFs that need to be the same relative size. And if I change the size in design space, uh, I'll either want to have all the pieces imported at once or I'll want to know what percentage of the original value I change them to. So I will save this. Now I will go and open Design Space and be right back. Here's a little recap of what we just saw. Import a PDF to Inkscape one page at a time. Then I use layers to organize the elements more easily. I grab the edge numbers. I do path object to path and then path combine. I grab the valley fold lines. I do path combine and then I change the stroke to a solid line. I grab the mountain fold lines. I do path combine, then change the stroke to a three dash line. And then the important part on that is extensions, then modify path, then convert to dashes. Then I grab the outline sections. I do path combine, then I bucket fill the desired color and I remove the stroke. I save the SVG, open in design space. I change the edge numbers to pen extra fine. I change the solid valley score lines to the type score. I use the contour tool to remove unwanted errant lines from the mountain fold dash lines. 
but I leave those as basic cut. I send to the machine that will score, draw, and cut the pieces, and then I assemble and enjoy.